Today we are talking about some of my unpopular Harry Potter opinions. I posted a couple of these over on my Twitter and I had a really fun time discussing them with you so I thought, hey, let's make a list. Let's make a video. I will not be talking about the frequently discussed unpopular opinions. Things like Snape's morality, is the cursed child horrible? We've discussed these at length. All of us have. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about things that are a little bit more under the radar that I have opinions about that you may disagree with me on, but that's the fun of it. First of all, I think we should talk about Ron and Hermione. So this is not an uncommon popular opinion. People don't like them together. People love them together. People have opinions. This is something that we talk about. However, I think my opinion on this popular discussion, this popular subject is very unpopular, or at least I've just never heard anybody else say this. I think that Ron and Hermione dating in the books is great. I just don't think they should have ended up together. Ron and Hermione are two fantastic characters on their own, but they are terrible as a couple. They bicker constantly, they regularly butt heads, they are excellent friends, but they are so irritating to one another that they would make a terrible couple. I mean, they would fight constantly. They would not live together in peace and harmony. They would live together in constant irritation. But they are best friends and they are kids and they are navigating their feelings. And the fact that they eventually develop crushes on each other, totally realistic. The fact that they decide to start dating a little bit, totally realistic. If they had started dating in book four or book five and dated for a few months and then realized actually we don't work together as a couple and then broken up and then we had awkward scenes of them navigating the emotions of having broken up and navigating the difficulty of trying to maintain your friendship after a breakup that would have been such good young adult content that would have been so interesting to see that kind of relationship dynamic in the harry potter series they have such a solid friendship and their relationship, in my opinion, doesn't make sense as a romantic relationship. So if they had dated, tried it out, realized we don't make sense together, and then had to navigate figuring out how to repair their friendship and get out of the awkwardness of we dated a little, we kissed a little, didn't work out, we broke up. You know what I mean? That would have been that would have been so good. Like there's so much about the Harry Potter series that is so relatable and teaches kids so much. Navigating something like that, a breakup and maintaining friendship after the breakup, if you feel like maintaining the friendship, that's good content right there. I don't think that they should have ended up together. That's not an unpopular opinion, but I like that they dated and I wish that they had dated sooner and then broken up after a couple of months. I think that that would have been great content. I don't like, this is, this is just me tangent now, I don't like that every one of the main characters in the Harry Potter series married their high school sweetheart. Like, I know it happens, but not that often. Unpopular opinion number two, talked about this on my Twitter, Salazar Slytherin, when he said that he didn't want to let Muggleborns into the school, I don't think that that's so bad. Hear me out, hear me out. It is book canon that during the time where Hogwarts was formed, muggles were regularly hunting down and burning witches. They were afraid of magic, they were harming the magical community, and witches and wizards had to go into hiding and had to hide their magical powers and their magical school from muggles because they couldn't live in harmony because muggles were hurting them. That is book canon. And so with that in mind, knowing that Salazar Slytherin said, I don't think we should let Muggleborns into the school. I don't think that that's necessarily so unreasonable. I mean, is it really so unreasonable that he would be concerned that the school and the students would be at risk if we let people in who come from families who are actively trying to harm their community? Don't get me wrong. I don't necessarily, I mean, I'm glad that they didn't go that route. I'm glad that they admitted Muggleborns. So I don't necessarily think that you should exclude the child because of the family. So, you know, let's, let's not make this a big thing. I'm just saying, I don't think that he was so unreasonable for being concerned. There's a lot wrong with Salazar Slytherin, but I don't necessarily think that that is one of the things. I'm popular opinion number three, even though I pretty much don't like any of the canon couples in the Harry Potter series. And frankly, I think that the whole series would have been fine with no ra romance whatsoever. Not that it's romance centered, but no, no coupling up really needed to happen as far as like permanent. But I will say, if we were gonna make a permanent couple, Hermione and Neville, th they're my ship. I just, I think that they would have been great together. Unpopular opinion number four, and this is one that I've heard before, so I'm not claiming it as my original thought, but I full on agree, and I don't hear enough people talking about it. Harry should have died 
and meant it. We have the resurrection trope happening, which y'all know I hate, but one thing that I think would have been phenomenal is if Harry died for real, for real, for real, and meant it and stayed dead, and then Neville killed Nagini, Neville killed Voldemort, and it turned out that the whole time Neville was the chosen one, or one of the chosen ones. They either one could have been it, and I know that either one could have been it and Voldemort chose Harry, and that's why Harry was it, but it would have been cool if there was an extra twist of, actually no, it still could have been either one. They were both the chosen one, and Harry died, and Neville lived on, and Neville finished the job. I think that it would have been great. I appreciate that Neville w was a big part in finishing off Voldemort, but I just, I think that one of the three should have died, and I think it should have been Harry. I'm popular opinion number five, and again, I'm not claiming this is to be an original thought because I have heard other people say it, but I don't hear enough people agree on it. I don't think book five Harry was all that angsty. I don't think he was annoying. Book five Harry, okay, book five Harry annoyed me the first couple times I read it as a teen. But as an adult rereading the series, book five Harry makes perfect sense. Boy just watched his friend get murdered in front of him and it was his fault. I mean, not really his fault, but it's, it, it was directly because of him that his friend died. This person that he looked up to, this person that helped him out, that he helped out, this person that really mattered in his life, died in front of his eyes as a 14 year old, watched a friend get murdered, and then the entire ministry turned their back on him, were actively trying to convince people that he was stupid and lying, and nobody really got it. And not only all that, not only did he just deal with with having to watch a friend be murdered, but the, he then after that, immediately after that, he had to be sent back to his abusive home where he is deeply neglected, physically and emotionally abused on a regular basis, and that's how he gets to cope with his PTSD, by going back into an abusive environment and seeing through the paper that people think, well actually not through the paper, through his friends, that, that the government is actively spewing slurs about him. What? And he was mad and he was upset, and he was handling his grief poorly. As a 15 year old who just watched someone die, and who has been in an abusive family his entire life, and who the government is actively trying to convince is terrible. Yeah, he was overreacting. I get that some of his reactions to things are out of proportion, but he's a 15 year old dealing with severe PTSD. Give the kid a break. On popular opinion number six, again, I've heard this one before, not claiming it to be an original thought, but it's not a super popular opinion. I don't get the serious love. Hear me out. I don't think that Sirius Black is bad. I don't dislike him by any means. In fact, I really like his character. I think he's a wonderfully written character, but I don't understand why people are so obsessed with like, Harry deserved better than to have him die right away, or even the immediate attachment between Sirius and Harry. I mean, I know he's a victim of abuse, so attaching yourself to like the first adult that shows you any sort of affection is reasonable, but Hagrid was that first adult that showed him true fam family affection. And I don't get why Sirius is like Harry's stand-in dad when he's barely involved in Harry's life and frankly a little bit unstable. He actively doesn't view Harry as a child but as basically a miniature James, which totally understandable. Sirius has been through a whole bunch of stuff himself and not being fully hinged is completely reasonable. But he doesn't treat Harry as if he's his adoptive son or anything like that. He treats him as if Harry is his stand-in best friend and his best friend is still around. And I think that that's excellent character arc. I think that that's super interesting. I love Sirius and Harry's dynamics and how Sirius doesn't treat Harry the way he should, but as he wants him to be. I love those dynamics between the two. I just don't understand why people think that Sirius is like Harry's stand-in dad. I don't get it. Like, no he's not. He's he's Harry's stand-in friend and Harry's Sirius's stand-in friend. I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Unpopular opinion number seven, and I've never heard anyone else say this, I don't think, but I think that Crookshank's arc is completely wasted. Crookshanks is Hermione's cat. Plays a big role in book three as he recognize, not recognizes, but like understands that Sirius Black is good and tries to partner up with him and tries to get rid of Scabbers because he recognizes that he is bad. It's a really interesting plot dynamic. The cat is actually quite relevant and not just this thing that makes Hermione and Ron fight constantly. But the reason I think it's wasted potential is because the big twist is the cat was really smart. It's a good cat. 
it gets things. It's very intuitive because it's a little bit magical. So cool. But I mean, if Cruikshanks were like an ad animagus animagus how do you pronounce that word if crookshanks were a person pretending to be an animal like Sirius black and like peter pettigrew and it turns out that crookshanks was somehow like someone connected to the marauders or something like that how interesting would that have been like oh my goodness we could have done so much with crookshanks other than he's a really intuitive cat missed potential my last unpopular opinion is that i don't think the harry potter series are five star books now the million and five times that I've read and reread this series because it's been a lot. I have rated it five stars almost every single time <laughs> because nostalgia makes it five stars. This world is huge. It is so rich and environmental and just hanging out. This is one of the few book series where I love the scenes where we just hang out and do nothing because it's a world that I just want to live in and so I love just hanging out in this world. The characters are deep, the characters are complex, there's so much to love about this book, about this plot, about the characters, about the world, but it's also absolutely full of plot conveniences and plot holes. As a nostalgic reader, it is a five star series. I love it. There's so much to love about it and it is a huge, like maybe the biggest part of my childhood. But as a book reviewer, I can't give them five stars. They're more like four stars because there are so many flaws that it's kind of hard to ignore them when you're used to rating books. I recently had Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban in a wrap up and I gave it four stars and somebody commented and was like, what? Four stars? What? Which I totally understand because I think I've commented that on someone's booktube channel before. Before, before I had a booktube channel myself, I'm pretty sure I've commented that. So I get it. No hate, no shame. But as a book reviewer, I have to recognize the flaws in a book, right? Like, I can't only see the good stuff and then ignore the bad stuff. And the truth is, this series has flaws. So, I mean, I love Harry Potter as much as the next person. I love Harry Potter more than the next person. I'm the biggest fan! Just kidding. I don't want to get too intense. I love Harry Potter. I reread the series every single year, and I have since it first started coming out. I mean, I'm, I'm a really legit fan, but there are so many plot conveniences and plot holes. I mean, so many. I love it, but it's more like a four-star series for me. You keep it at five stars if that's what it is for you. I will not be bothered at you for being different from me. Okay, so those are eight unpopular opinions that I have about the Harry Potter series. I would love to hear some of yours in the comments and maybe I'll make up another list because I literally just made this up while I was eating my lunch right before I filmed. So I would love to make up another list of more Harry Potter unpopular opinions and do this again in the future. But in, in the meantime, please chat with me in the comments. I want to hear some of your unpopular Harry Potter opinions. I post videos every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so I will see you again very soon. Bye.